Tony Dennison of TNT's Major Crimes. Tony, welcome to Totally Driven Radio. Hey, how are you doing? Sorry for the late start. Uh, I was in the middle of a whole bunch of stuff, and I uh, my publicist called and said, and I was like, oh, my God, so here I am. <laughs> That's I quite all right. Your patience. Hey, real quick, something funny that I realized, um, as I was researching and, and looking things up for you, I come across your Facebook page, okay, your personal one. Okay. And it turns out you're friends with a good friend of mine. From a, we're based here in Philadelphia, and he's from Philadelphia, and he's living out there out in the, I think he's, he might even, he, I talked to him Monday, he was sitting in Beverly Hills having lunch. Uh, his name's Joey Feldman. Oh, God, yeah, I know Joey. Yeah. <laughs> I know Joey, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've known him uh, almost uh, two years now. Yeah, yeah, he's been out there, I guess, for about two years now. He's he's an artist doing work out there. Yeah, he's a very good artist. His stuff was in... Uh... Was in that it was all those those those, those uh, illustrations that were in Argo. Yes. Were, yes. Were done, were done by him. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's phenomenal. Yeah. He he, uh, he used to live out here in uh, Philly, and um, we used to be involved in pro wrestling. Myself and my co-host and uh, Joey got he was a big wrestling fan. He wanted to be in pro wrestling, so we uh, we gave him a uh, wrestling gimmick and made him a manager, and he was like the X Man uh, uh, gimmick. I see. <laughs> so, so you, yeah, well, you, I mean, anyway, I can see anyway. Joey doing whatever he wants to do. He's, a, he's that good a guy, you know. Whatever he, whatever he tries to do, hope he's successful at it. He seems to be doing really good with the with the illustration. So, yeah, yeah, he is. He's really happy too. So, you guys have your big, uh, the big re debut. You guys come back uh, with new episodes Monday night. We have our big, yeah, Monday night. Um, and it's our, it's our, I guess you could call it the winter episodes, um, and there'll be nine of them. So for the next consecutive Mondays, nine consecutive Mondays, they'll nice. be, uh, yeah. And it's, uh, you know, there'll be some some storylines that uh, were hinted at in the first uh, ten, the summer ten, and uh, you know there'll be. Um, sort of picked up on a little bit in the in these episodes, and there's a lot of stuff in terms of resolution for some ongoing investigations. And you know, it's again, it's it's this really cool group of guys and women and men who were doing this other show for seven years and now have gotten the opportunity to continue to play these characters. <clears throat> and you know, here we are officially second year and we're going to start our third year in March and it's great you know it's really really great I mean I I can't say how great it is loud enough and long enough but it is um, and we this year I think I mean last year and this year the show has taken a sort of a grittier turn than it used to be on the closer I mean okay. there were some episodes of the closer that were very you know, that would be considered very dark. But uh, this is a certain little, maybe because it's more of an ensemble now, I don't know. Uh, there's just some difference in terms of storytelling. Yet, it's the same, you know, executive producer, James Duff. He's got a sure, steady hand, uh, you know, at the typewriter or the pen, whatever. And um, he writes great stuff. And I'm only too happy to do it. So, so is it is it all like uh, the same staff behind the scenes as well from the closer to major crimes? Everything's the same. Everything's the same. There's a couple of camera people who had left, and there's some crew people who had left, but not very many. I'd say overall, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'd say there's at least eighty five percent of the people that were on the crew of The Closer are still on the crew of Major Crimes, maybe 90%. Wow. And um, of the cast, we lost four principals, and uh, and we carry on. Very which nice. is, you know, unheard of, you know, to lose four principals from a show. Right. And then carry on, and then not only stay on the air, but get even greater numbers than the show before got. Now, has there ever, ever been a show um, in a similar situation as that? And then where you guys have the spinoff, which I think was something great that was done, where uh, the final, the series finale of um, The Closer 
was your lead in to the new series? Yeah, no, I don't I don't know of that ever happening, to be honest with you. I think this is what you know, James Duff said that this makes us unique, that this sort of situation didn't happen before. I mean there've been um there have been shows with characters that made a crossover, um, but it was always like a different show. This is the same show, only with a different name. Right. So, I mean, we still solve crimes in the interrogation room. We're all we're all still like, you know, case closers because we're, we're this, you know, major crimes unit, which is an elite unit. And... Uh, Pardon me. We're very good at what we do. Now, in your career, you've played both sides of the fence where you've played a detective, a police officer, and you've also played a mob guy. Which do you prefer yeah. to play? Uh, I, you know, that's a good question. I, I, I like – I really enjoy playing a lot of the gangsters that I've played. I mean, obviously, I got my break doing Crime Story, and and that gangster was, you know, for me, you know – it's like it opened up the, the gates of Hollywood for me. Um, but I've enjoyed – see, you know, the thing that's interesting is, like, when you play a character, uh, whether he be a gangster, uh, you know, criminal or crook, it, it, I mean, or a cop, you know, the, the thing is what your character is asked to do, like, like, for example, Lieutenant Flynn, he is the kind of guy who will go right up to that edge. You know, and on the other side of that edge, the ends justify the means. You know, but he doesn't cross that line. He goes right up to that line, and he gets as close to it as you can. That, as an actor, that's exciting to play. You know, when when you're playing a gangster, he can cross the line. He can say the ends justify the means. And then it's you know, it's the repercussions of it and how that person deals with it is I find fascinating as an actor to play. Uh, but, you know, it's wonderful to play a guy who crosses the line, and it's another, another thing to play a guy who doesn't. I mean, sometimes there's some cops who cross the line, you know, and right. you deal with that situation. And you don't ever, I guess the key is, well, at least for me, is I don't ever play a character, gangster or, you know, or cop, uh, no matter how edgy they might be. Uh, I don't ever play them to have the character be liked. I only play them with the idea that I hope that they're understood, that, you know, based on whatever that character's reality is, whatever his world is, this is the choice that seemed, you know, the preeminent choice that he had to make. Or, you know, and, I, and, I, and that's what I try to do. And, and if, the char- if, the, if the audience likes my character, fine. But as long as right. they say, you know, well, I understand what that guy's going through, then I've succeeded. Now, here's a question, too. Um, Police detective shows, cop shows, I mean, they've been around for so many years, and yet it seems like they're still – like every network will have one of their own, but they're always, for the most part, pretty successful. Yeah. (laughs) Do you think – like you would think like people would get tired of it, but people – I guess it's like a car accident where people just can't stop watching them. Yeah, I think – the reason why you can go back even to the westerns where they had the sheriff and you know with the white hats and the black hats, um, right? I, I, you know, it's like people who's going to uphold the law at the end of the day? Who's going to uphold the law? Who's going to keep? Who's going to throw themselves in between you know the crazies and the non crazies? And that's right, always right. interesting. You know, what's that? Yeah, no, I was, I was saying you're right. You're right. Yeah, I mean, so that's always interesting to play that kind of drama. Uh, you know, after a while, you, you can get tired of you know all the the uh, all the, the science fiction stuff with you know the bad guys are from outer space. But at the same token, it's still the same thing. There's still the guys who are fighting law and order in the universe. Star Trek is a cop show, only it's done yeah. in outer space. You know, uh, and we're all in a sense soap operas too at the same time. You know, Star yeah. Trek was a soap opera in space. We're a soap opera with badges and bullets, and you know, and like The Sopranos was a, was a, was a soap opera, you know, with bullets and, and you know, and, 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 and wise guys. It's right. all the same. They're all the same. And if you, if the writer and the cast really enjoy what they're doing, 
and don't try to do this like wide berth. Like, let me try to please everybody. Uh, and let me just try to please myself in terms of like going for my own individual excellence. Then you'll you'll get you'll gather a crowd, you know, uh, and crowd stays with you because people like you know people like watching people who are like really intent on what they're doing. And um, I think I think the, the cop shows on all the networks, the good the good ones. That's what they do. I mean, like, there's no, there's no, it's, it's no accident that Law and Order is on the air like 20 years or something. Or right. Exactly. Years. Because they've got this formula. It's the good guys versus the bad. It's the white hats and the black hats. You know, it's the, the Klingons versus, you know, the the the, the Earthlings. It's you know, it, it it goes on and on, and it's exciting to watch when the when everybody is clearly defined. And then they're constantly being they're constantly being challenged. Their morality is constantly being challenged, and that's what makes cop shows exciting to watch. I think, anyway. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I watch them. I mean, I'm a fan of the business as much as I'm in the business. I'm a fan of the business too. So, yeah, um, you, I didn't even really think of it that way. You just explain it too with like Star Trek. I mean, I mean, right. that's just that's the way you explained it. I, I never even thought of it that way but i yeah you're absolutely right and, and it is a good formula and it's been working like with uh the law and orders and now with your show and other shows and other networks they're all have that formula and it still works today yeah then there's, there's variations like this new show i only watched one episode and he's a good actor james Spader. it's called the black uh blacklist i guess or back blacklist anyway yeah. there's, sort, there's sort of a twist where it's not in the Traditional sense of the good guys versus the bad guys, but you know what's what's happened over the years now is there have been the not so good guys and the not so bad guys, you know, and uh, but they still are drawn along those particular lines, and the conflict ensues that way. I mean, again, the not so good guys who are the good guys are usually characters who have decided that the ends justify the means. You know, if right. you were the recipient of that for philosophy, like as a citizen, you're not necessarily so condemning of them. But later on, when you think about it, uh, it becomes very, uh, you think, wow, I just happened to be the recipient in the positive way. I could have been the other person that was the recipient of that in the negative way, and I wouldn't have liked it very much. You know, there's a great, there's a great line in a movie um, Paul Schofield is the man for all seasons. And he says to character, I can't remember his name now, the son-in-law, and he was talking about the devil, you know, the metaphor of the devil anyway. And he was saying, you know, what would you do? To, would you unturn this law to go after the devil? And the son-in-law said, yes. And would you overturn these set of laws to go after the devil? And the son said, yes. The son-in-law said, yes. And he listed all of these things. Would you overturn completely to go after the devil? And he said, Yes, I would do that. He goes, and when you're in the corner and the devil then turns on you and all the laws are laid to waste, what would you do then? And I thought that was, you know, a really a brilliant part of, of you know, what it's about. You know, with right. real law and order and and and, 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 uh, and top, top dramas in, in real life and top dramas on television. You know, you've got to have these conventions. Otherwise... The chaos ensues, and these people are the convention that try to prevent chaos. Yep. I think well, the reason why people don't have attorneys is because they don't know how to be reasonable with one another. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess Monday is going to be a major crimes day on TNT because they're doing a a marathon all day long and uh, gearing everybody up for the new episode at nine o'clock. But oh yeah, all day that's long, what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, all day long they were going to have all that from this season. Right, they're going to show all the previous episodes this year and then start with the new one, which is great. I mean, look, look hey, um, I love doing the character. I love, you know, the opportunity to work with this cast, you know, Mary McDonald. And I especially love working with G.W. Bailey. Our characters get, you know, a chance to sort of <laughs> walk, you know, like off the beaten path a little bit. Uh, right. But still, maintain a reality, and that's fascinating to play as an actor. 
I really love that, like how you don't cross the line into complete slapstick. But yet, in real life, there are things that, like to this day, if you're, I mean, whether you want to or not, care to admit to or not, but when somebody, you're walking down the street and somebody slips on a banana peel, you, you laugh. As long as the person's not seriously hurt, you tend right. to laugh at like what it looks like. You know, Charlie Chaplin, that's slapstick. But in real yep. life, you laugh too, you know. Yeah. Um, it's just that in the Charlie Chaplin movie, there's, you know, hundreds of banana peels. <laughs> right. uh, so, but you know, I, again, it's I, I, I'm I'm I don't want to sound like the t- stereotypical actor. Oh, I'm so happy to be here, you know, like in Bulls Durham. I'm just happy to be, you know, a part of the team and want to contribute. But I am. I'm happy to be a part of the team, and I I want to contribute whatever way I can. And that's awesome. um, you know, and that's what it's about for me. I uh, I know that you know, the, the 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 thing that happens for us is that. Our life, my life as, as Lieutenant Flynn, exists between the words action and cut. That's where all my drama and, and danger lurks. And real cops, you know, when they wake up in the morning, they're, you know, action happens then, and cut doesn't right. happen until they go to bed at night. So, like, they're on all the time. Yeah. And, you know, you, you look at that, and if you get to portray a segment of that on these shows and make it seem like it's really happening, or that's what it would really be like, then you've succeeded. You know, because you can't show cops on a stakeout in a movie or television because they're, when they're on a stakeout sitting in a car, they're usually on a stakeout for three or four hours. I mean, unless they have some, like, incredibly clever banter, <laughs> nobody's going to sit still to watch that. So you have to condense it and put it in such a way that you're true to the idea of what they're doing, but yet make it compelling dramatically because nothing ha- much is happening. On a stake. Right. You know? So the, those those are the those are the, the you know the uh, what's the word the, the things that that like writers do the challenges for them. Mm-hmm. And then as the actor, you, the challenges for you, you know, to do the same thing to make it be very dramatic and and lively. And sometimes you just on a stakeout. Very cool. Yeah. Well, let's. Uh kind of push for time but i would love to have you come back on when we got more time and really talk with you some more maybe like for the season finale this year we'll get you back on and talk oh, some more and please just yeah I'll, uh you, i guess i don't know we contact my publicist or whatever or i'll tell her that you said that and i'd yeah. love to come on and talk about it and i even with your other guest uh i talked to him about like who should own baseball stadiums and that or stadiums period <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what uh our next guest coming up is uh, the winner of Master Chef. I see that you're like a big culinary uh, expert over there. Well, I, I can cook. My girlfriend Melissa Beaton, she's the better cook. And uh, but I did play a character who's a chef in a restaurant. It was a lot of fun. Um, well, what what's but this? I, uh, I, you, I, you know what? What's this French toast Italian style with stuff for got to oh, cheese? Oh, Sicilian style. Yeah. It's basically, it's, it's made almost the same way that you make French toast, except okay. there's vanilla extract and there's almond extract, and then there's uh, the the bread is, is is like loaf bread sliced thick, and inside I cut a hole and I put the the, the cream that you get from like cannolis. I put that okay. inside the middle of it, you know, and ah. then I put um, sliced strawberries and sliced. Um, peaches or whatever, depending on what the person likes. And I add that to the dish. That and, sounds you know, then you go into a diabetic shock after you eat it. Right, but right, right. <laughs> but it's pretty sweet and good. That sounds incredible. Yeah, so let's, let's uh, we'll hook it up for uh, for the end of the season. Now, Monday, everybody's got to tune in TNT all day, Major Crimes Marathon from 10 a.m. up until through to 9 p.m. Eastern that night. And then 9 p.m. is the new episode. And then for the next nine weeks, we have nine new episodes coming up of Major Crimes. Thank you for the time. Uh, and Thank written, you. A great question. And, uh, and uh, you know, I look forward to talking to you again uh, down the road. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I want to thank – I said this earlier in the show. I want to thank you personally and your PR because it's great to see when uh, a guest is promoting their appearance and they're promoting their – it shows they're taking pride in 
their project and themselves and they're promoting and their PR people are promoting and they're doing their job. It just makes me feel a lot better. Well, thanks. Thank you. All right, Tony, great talking to you. We'll talk to you again in a few weeks. And I'll give you advice. Should I tell Joe you said hey? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, I will. Thank you. All right, thank Take you. Take care. Bye-bye. Yep. See ya. All right, everybody, that was Tony Dennison of the hit series on TNT, Major Crimes. Make sure you tune in Monday for the Major Crimes Marathon and the new episode that airs 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday night on TNT.